The Intel Arc B580 could be the best budget GPU on the market right now, but it does have some caveats that make it not quite plug and play. You do need specific hardware to support this card, and it says so right on the box. You need a 10th gen Intel Core processor, and a motherboard supporting resizable bar. So that's an important thing to note if you're gonna get this card. This unfortunately means it will not work well with older hardware, especially like an old office PC or an old workstation. Trust me, I tried to install it into a Lenovo ThinkStation P520, link to that video in the description below, and it didn't work out so well. So today I'm gonna pair the card with my little mid-range build here, which sports an Intel i5-12600KF CPU, 32 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM, one terabyte Gen 4 M.2 SSD, and a 750 watt PSU. My current GPU in here is an RX 6800, which has been a great pairing for this build, but I'm curious if the B580 can keep up with the performance I'm used to with the 6800. So just a quick swap of the GPUs and I'm able to fire it up to see what we're working with. The first thing I need to do is download the drivers from Intel's website, which is a quick and easy process. I also removed all AMD drivers and software just to ensure no weird cross driver issues will arise while testing. Looking at the Intel app, we can see that resizable bar is enabled and we do have a 12th gen Intel CPU, so we should be good to go to give this thing a full test. So let's jump into some games to see how it performs. Starting off with the brand new Monster Hunter Wilds just released today at the time of recording this video. This is a great initial test for the B580 since this is a new title, so it'll be interesting to see if it can keep up performance wise. One thing to note, I tried recording this with OBS and the Intel GPU's AV1 encoder, but it came out a stuttery mess since I was overloading the hardware by trying to record and play the game all with the B580. I will get more into content creation with this card a little bit later in the video, but for now, as you can see by the numbers, we're getting a solid FPS, so this game is definitely playable with this card. So we're in 1440p and I do have FSR upscaling enabled so that I can use frame generation to hit these numbers. And if I want to absolutely maximize performance, I can bump things down to low settings and performance upscaling, which gets me in the high 70s, low 80s range, which is perfectly acceptable. You just give up some of that graphical quality. If we then maximize quality by using both high settings and quality upscaling out in the open world here, still very playable and looks good, getting around 60 FPS. So while not the best performance in the world, I was pleasantly surprised with what this card could do with a brand new game, especially when these days there are typically all sorts of performance issues at launch. Next, we're taking a look at God of War Ragnarok in 1440p high settings with XESS upscaling set to Ultra Quality Plus. And I gotta admit, things look great. Solid mid-70s FPS, everything looks smooth, and for a game like this, you don't need to go much higher in FPS to notice a difference, in my opinion. But to fully max this out, I did enable FSR Frame Gen, which works with XESS upscaling in this scenario. And you can see we gain about 20 or so frames here, getting in the high 90s, low 100s, so this card absolutely crushes this game. Hogwarts Legacy is the next game in the list, a game that is now two years old, which is crazy to think about, so this card should, in theory, have no issues running it. We start off in 1440p Ultra settings with XESS set to Ultra Quality Plus, and we're just going to run around Hogsmeade here for a little bit, as this can be one of the more performance-impacting areas of the game, with all the NPCs around, and everything seems to be running great getting high 60s to low 70s in FPS, no stutters or dips, and I will say, for whatever reason, the hair on the characters looks way better with the B580 than the RX 6800. With the 6800, everyone's hair looked noisy and spackly, which was just really annoying, especially during cutscenes, but with the B580, all the hair was smooth and rendered properly, so points to the B580, and points to Ravenclaw, best house in Hogwarts. There, I said it. And what would a gaming benchmark video be without Fortnite? So here we are dropping in with DirectX 12 epic settings in 1440p to see how we do with that. And obviously with those settings we are not prioritizing frame rate, so we're getting right around 60 FPS. Perfectly playable, but if you want that high FPS low latency for a first person shooter like this, just bump those settings down to medium or low, which I attempted to do here, but I got killed in the process, so RIP me. And last up, we have Elden Ring. We are in the Shadow of the Erd Tree DLC area, which is a bit more demanding on the GPU. And I actually did record this using OBS, which was very stuttery unless I walked very slowly out of the door, which you can see I'm doing here. Elden Ring does have a 60 FPS cap on the game, which you can't get around without mods. So really all you're asking for here is a steady FPS and the game will look and feel great. This is on maximum graphics settings, so without OBS running, you can easily achieve that steady 60 FPS, which is really all you can ask for with this card. 
Jumping into benchmark scores, I started by using 3 d Mark Steel Nomad, which is apparently the new standard for 1440p benchmarks, but I gotta be honest, I don't know what this score of 3046 means without having anything else to compare it to. So I ran good old 3 d Mark Time Spy as well to see some scores that I'm more familiar with, and wow, was I impressed with the score of 13,924 and a graphic score of 14,329. From what I know, this is a better score than the RTX 4060 would provide and slightly lower than my RX 6800. So all in all, this is a pretty great card for the price. It just needs continuous driver support to perform well with new games, as well as other PC functions that rely on the GPU. Which brings me into content creation, and unfortunately for me, this is where the card lacks. As mentioned previously, I tried recording most of my benchmarks capturing game footage in OBS, and even with the AV1 encoder, which I needed to run OBS as an admin for this option to even show up by the way, I struggled to get any decent footage without any major stuttering. I was trying to record in 1440p, so maybe if I bumped things down to 1080p it would have been better, but it's kind of a shame because I know with my RTX 4060 and an even less powerful CPU, I can record and stream in 1440p without any issues at all. All that being said, this card could be great as a GPU in a dedicated streaming PC, given that it does allow for AV1 encoding, but obviously that means running a dual PC setup which can get expensive. So I have hope that things will get better with drivers and updates that allow for better recording and streaming options with the Intel Arc cards, but for now, I can't really recommend it. One last thing I wanted to cover, now that we live in the age of AI, Intel does have an AI platform that you can download called AI Playground, specifically designed for Intel Arc GPUs. I played around with this a little bit, and while it's cool, you can create images from text and use chat command prompts. I didn't really see it doing anything better or different from some of the top AI chatbots such as ChatGPT, Gemini, or even Grok. So while this is definitely a nice to have tool, I still think there's a long way to go in having your own personal AI on your PC, especially to help with daily tasks and things like that. But nevertheless, very cool feature and I'm glad Intel is pushing these boundaries in the GPU space to make things more competitive against Nvidia and AMD. So well, that's it for this video. Overall, I think this is a great card. I think it's a step in the right direction for Intel and for the GPU market in total. Having a more budget option like this is great for competition. And I think with extended driver support and updates that Intel can make to support their Arc series and their Battle Mage series of cards, things could be looking good in the near future for this type of GPU. So let me know in the comments, is this something that you would get? Are you in the market for an Intel Arc GPU? Very curious to see what you all think. So be sure to leave a comment, like the video and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one.